Hello chess lovers, Surnan here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game played by young Mikhail Tal. At the time the future world chess champion was only 16 and in this game he first puts up a tough defense and then turns it into an irresistible attack. In this game Tal's opponent is Latvian chess player Karlis Klasup who later in 1959 would win Latvian chess championship. But meanwhile this game was played in 1952 at Latvian championship and Klasup had white pieces opened up with d4, Tal answered with knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3, c6. Tal is setting up a very solid semi-slav defense. e3, knight bd7, Bishop d3, Bishop b4. Uh, according to modern theory, d takes c4 is considered to be the main move, but Bishop d6 can be also seen very often. In the game we see Bishop b4 by Tal, a3, Bishop a5, after which both players castled kingside and knight e5. Not the best continuation, years later Kasparov and Korshnoi would choose queen c2 when having this position and even Jan Timon would play queen c2 against Tal in 1978. And the problem with this move is that after the exchange on e5, uh, Blake is managing to equalize without much effort. Knight d7, f4, queen e7. Uh, Tal is reinforcing the pawn on e6 and is preparing f6. But uh, playing actively, like advancing on the queen side and then removing this knight is better. Yeah, in some cases knight e4, knight d6 can be unpleasant. And then after b takes c3, once Blake is damaging white's queen side pawn structure, Blake can either play queen b6 or knight c5. Instead, to f4, Tal answered with queen e7. b4, bishop b6, queen b3. The idea of queen b3 is to stop f6. In this case, white can win the pawn on e6 with a check. But believe it or not, f6 was made by Tal and he invited bishop takes e6 check. King h8, knight e4. Now look at this point, if move like e takes f6, then black can recapture with the knight. And if a move like bishop takes c8, then bishop takes e3 check and then bishop takes c1. But instead of choosing this line, actually e takes f6 is a strong move. Class of plate knight e4, which is a strange looking move and is allowing black to gain advantage. f takes e5 by Tal. King h1, white is moving away his king from this dangerous diagonal. But this time there comes e takes f4. e takes f4, knight f6. Suddenly we can see that black managed to get a very pleasant position and uh, Black's position is even preferable. Knight g5 by Klasup, knight e4 and knight f7 check, which is already a mistake. Well, at this point it was better to capture on e4 and in return allow Black to win the light squared bishop. Uh, Black has a nice bishop pair and has better chances, but all in all this is a, a preferable line than the one which we see in our game. In our game knight f7 was made, but instead of thinking about moving away his king, Tal made an exchange sacrifice and he played rook takes f7. Bishop takes f7 and knight's black knight who is harassing white king. Knight f2 check. Uh, like black you can't uh, give up the exchange because there is a back rank weakness, you can get checkmated. That's why Klaus played king g1 and knight d3 check. Uh, actually at this point Tal is missing... Uh, very strong queen h4 move, after which uh, black is winning on the spot. Right now the threat is knight g4 discover check followed by checkmate. And if bishop e3 then again knight g4 is winning. Uh, instead Tal chose knight d3 check, which uh, by the way is also strong and is winning. King h1, queen e2, hitting on f1. Bishop b2, protecting the rook and at the same time using the fact that you can't win this bishop because of this rook e1 move. Uh, but instead of thinking about touching that bishop, Tal made a very powerful move. Can you find Tal's next move? Ready? Yeah, instead of winning the bishop, he made a bishop sacrifice. A very, very impressive move, right guys? What are you going to play now? There is a direct mating threat. If you accept the bishop sacrifice, then queen e4 check is coming and suddenly 
White king is getting checkmate hit. That's why to bishop h3, white answered with a desperate bishop takes g7, check, king takes g7, bishop d5, another desperate move, c takes d5, queen takes d5, and at this point the question arises, uh, how should black proceed? Uh, there is always a threat of perpetual check, you know, you have to be very careful. Uh, that's why at this point Tal actually found a very strong move and he played king h8, both preventing a check from g5, and at the same time Tal is opening up the g file uh, for the rook, and now rook g8 can be a nice threat. For example, if move like g takes h3, then rook g8 is coming and black is winning. In here to king h8 we have a queen g5 answer, and at this point, yes, you have to be very careful because hurrying with rook g8 can allow white to give a perpetual check. Uh, that's why once queen g5 appeared on the board, Tal hurried with uh, covering the long diagonal with bishop d4. g takes h3 and finally rook g8 is on the board. Yeah, at this point already uh, there is a forced mate in 6. White made a desperate Rook e1 move, but resigned after knight takes e1. It's over. Well, white's last move was actually very strange, but even if not rook e1, then how are you going to save the game? Yeah, just no defense, you know. That's why on move 30, finally, Glassup capitulated. Another very nice game by Tal, where very quickly he managed to turn defense into an irresistible counterattack. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white. It's white to move and, as usual, we'll wait for your answers in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care!